Dear Mrs. Moonen, I have been granted power of attorney regarding the matter of A.B. and Amro versus Carl and Sue Vandebrand. I look forward to resolving related matters, and over the next few days, I do intend to furnish an initial response to the position of the bank, as much as the bank's implicit position can be understood from circumstance and given information. That sentence puts into perspective a fact that the arguments for what must be their claims, if they're claiming payments have to be made of principal and interest, the arguments don't exist anywhere in the world. And I've been researching this with the help of many people for almost 50 years now. I look forward to resolving related matters, I say, and over the next few days, I do intend to furnish an initial response to the position of the bank, whatever that is, as much as the bank's implicit position can be understood from circumstance and given information. Lacking any further given information, then all it can be understood from is circumstance, the implicit position, which of course is no legal argument. I understand that contractual obligations may be asserted to exist, which essentially then must derive not only from ostensible agreements between ABN, AMRO, and other banks in the assumable transmission of ostensibly lent monies, but most importantly also from commensurable consideration originating in faithful performance of a public trust inherently existing in the ostensible creation and acquisition or transmission of money by and between the banks of banking systems. I would be much obliged, therefore, for immediate, full, and faithful disclosure of ABN AMRO's prior knowledge of the trust it may or may not even agree exists in the proposition that money can indeed rightfully be lent into existence. Specifically, we desire to know without confusion, evasion, or equivocation how it is that banking contends it creates money as purported debts to a purported banking system which may or may not even give up commensurable consideration in the process. This, after all, is something we would expect you already know from such plentiful and faithful documentation as legitimate enterprise would already have provided. Thus it is, nonetheless, that we hope we may understand with appropriate certainty that such consideration as each resultant debt is indeed conveyed. That truly legitimate arrangements ensure to an actual creditor who indeed gives up property for promissory obligations that the representation of entitlement which money must in turn represent then is insured to every actual creditor of which the bank cannot be one and furthermore that it is both possible and practical under prevailing conditions for resultant obligors to fulfill their natural obligations to every such actual creditor when in practice they might only sustain a necessary or vital circulation 
by a perpetual escalation of borrowing, in which principal and interest only return to circulation, as irreversibly escalated and therefore inevitably terminal sums of otherwise falsified debt. In other words, given such global conditions as would corroborate such projected consequences, we are further concerned that the implied obfuscation of our promissory obligations to each other indeed inevitably precludes fulfillment of whatever contractual obligations banking otherwise might only claim utterly without legitimate grounds. Given the grave ramifications of an irreversible multiplication of falsified debt then, it is of course also important, this is our second question, first is commensable consideration, it is of course also important in the affairs of truly self-governed people that it can be demonstrated that already existing and assumably self-evident justifications of these processes are prior public knowledge and that such prior public knowledge has indeed conferred truly knowledgeable public assent. Necessarily then, the both must be comprehensive, not only of the prospective lack of commensurable consideration, but also of every potential implication. That would be including inevitably terminal monetary failure, dispossession, and dysfunctionality then. Thus assuming the evident volume of the requested material imposes no excessive burden because all that they require to provide these answers if they exist is to point us to where these accounts are that justify either question's answer in history. Thus assuming the evident volume of the requested material imposes no excessive burden, we also desire all the information you can provide as veritable testament to knowledgeable public assent. I thank you then, not only on behalf of myself and the Vanderbrands for your kind assurances regarding each of these vital dependencies. I thank you furthermore on behalf of all deserved citizens whose well-being indeed depends upon their sovereign right to knowledgeable assent. Warm regards, Mike Montagna. End of contest.